Hello guys, this is Saurav Singh from Alien Brains Educations. Let me tell you that this is our first Underhood session regarding the JavaScript. So what are we going to learn today? Let's see. We are going to learn that why is JavaScript single-threaded? Why such a powerful language does not allow us to spawn multiple threads programmatically? You know, but JavaScript is still a single threaded language, yet it is asynchronous. Okay, so first let us understand what does asynchronous single threaded multi threaded means. Okay, then we will switch that why is JavaScript actually single threaded yet asynchronous. So let's see that what does single thread means. Okay, single thread means that your whole code, your whole program is going to be executed. On a single stack frame there will be only a single call stack because that's how it works threads occupy their own private stack for execution because a single thread might call multiple functions in a row so we need to keep track of environment of each of the functions one by one so this is why a stack is needed and why what in the case of multi threads in case of multi threads suppose there are four threads then there will be four call stacks there will be four stacks each occupied each dedicated to the each of the threads that we have spawned in the multi multi threads so normally a program executes only in a single thread that we call a main thread okay so let's see how will this execution go for this sample program from line 1 to line 5 if it's a single threaded language okay so let's see first line one execution done okay line two done this line three as you see is such a code which sends a network request to the server okay so since this is a request to a distant server it has to take some time while processing the request and sending the response to us so this line 3 is going to take some time okay so what are we gonna do what is the main thread now going to do it has two options either it will wait that's the case of single thread a single thread waits on the on the line third of this program which can be any any kind of line it's in our case this is a network request to a server it it might be a input operation you know that stay that takes time so line third will stop the execution of the single of the main thread and just see as soon as the response comes let's say it takes five seconds for the response to arrive to us then after five seconds we come to line number four which actually depends on the response this line four should be executed only when the response comes the line four executes and then we move to the line 5 what's the problem in this okay what how would a multi threaded language handle handle this how would it handle this kind of waiting request so let's see if this is a multi threaded program let's say this is a java program okay in which what we are going to do line 1 is a normal execution code okay it's done line 2 done line 3 sends a network request to the server now in case of multi threaded program what i can do i can spawn a thread over here and tell that hey my child thread you can go and start executing the line 5 which is independent of my response from the server okay this is how it works this is how a multi threaded program works it is going to execute your independent code which we were not executing in the first case of single threaded environment so what's the deal what's so advantageous in this case we are increasing the throughput of our program by using multi thread multi threaders environment okay so in this case while waiting for five seconds my thread my main thread is on a halt situation but my child thread have started execu executing something isn't it so this is where in the waiting time 
some throughput is coming in that time also you know some output is getting generated this is how a multi-thread environment works but how is javascript single threaded and still able to carry out these kind of asynchronous operations this is an asynchronous operation doing anything parallelly while waiting for something to happen okay this is what asynchronous programming means we are not going to halt over this line 3 but we are going to execute some independent code that is line 5 over here okay now let's come to javascript javascript is single threaded yet asynchronous isn't it weird guys how is it able to carry out all the asynchronous function functions even if it's it has a single stack even if it has only a single thread so guys we are going to shift to a very famous animation created by robert yeah, philip roberts let's see if you know this screen okay then believe me you are on the right track as a javascript developer okay everyone must try how to how does the execution of javascript code works and this is a best site that he created you know you can check what's happening under the hood what's happening while a js code execute ex executes so let's look at this okay if you see the line number one is console log high then this is a set timeout function now guys this is where my asynchronous operation is coming after five seconds i want to execute a function called timeout right so let's say this set timeout function will be called and what will it do somewhere in the javascript runtime it is going to start a timer and wait for five seconds as soon as those five seconds get executed those that time passes the function timeout will be getting called then should i wait over here for five seconds and not execute this independent code this console log welcome to loop will this never be executed while waiting for five five seconds so guys if you think that the program will wait over here then you are wrong okay your execution moves on over to line number seven without waiting over here so there is something which keeps track which keep track of these kind of asynchronous operations but guys again this javascript is single thread how is it managing all these things so if you see on the right of that code this is a call stack as you see it's a single threaded environment so it there has to be only single stack this is a callback queue we will be coming coming to it that what it does and this is my web apis now guys browser itself has many apis for you to use now let's just see this set timeout function you are just calling this function you are just using this function you have not created this function so there has to be some place where this kind of codes need to be handled so guys this is how any kind of apis are dealt with like set timeout so let's see let's execute that how is this going to happen i am going to click save and run and just check now guys i know this looks really really weird but let's go into the depth of this that's what this underwood session means okay this line number one as we know that it's a normal execution it has to be pushed into the stack so line number one is getting pushed to the call stack then we come to line number three line number three is a normal function call set timeout but it has to be handled by a web api okay so what happens now whenever now guys set timeout will start a timer and i know that this is not going to remain on my call stack why because on the call stack i will keep track of my current execution if i keep this function on my call stack i will never be able to execute this console log welcome to loop because it's something that is coming later in my execution okay so i can't stop my execution i am not going to halt 
for that set timeout to complete. I will just handle this set timeout to the, I will transfer this set, set timeout function to web APIs. Now guys, web API will start a timer over, over there of five seconds and it will push that function timeout after five seconds into this callback queue. Now guys, why this callback queue? Because at any point of time, your, your call stack would be completing an execution, would be completing the execution of, of some code. You can't just push anything at the top of the stack at any time. That five seconds gets over, but it does not mean that your call stack is empty. So guys, callback queue will handle all those kind of timeout functions. It will never go directly into the stack. Now callback queue has kept let's let's check check it while running okay see the timer has started and after five seconds if you see it will be pushed down to the callback queue and if you see there is a loop and that's what we call an event loop an event loop checks whether there is something in the callback queue okay if there is something it will push it to the call stack now guys why the call stack this call stack will accept anything from callback queue only when it's empty so event loop will also keep on checking that whether the call stack is empty now guys as it becomes empty the thing the jobs from callback queue will be getting pushed to the call call stack as you see so after five seconds the function timeout will be transferred to the callback queue that it is ready for operation it is ready for execution okay and then after after event loop keeps on checking whether call stack is empty or not so guys does that mean that if call stack is never empty will my timeout function never will never get called yes guys it's true if your call if your call stack is always full your timeout function will never execute even after 10 seconds even after one hour because event loop needs a criteria to push anything into the call stack that is call stack must be empty so let's check if i write a while uh, uh, infinite loop over here does that mean that nothing will be pushed into the call stack it means that timeout function will never get pushed into the call stack why because at particular point of time your javascript runtime will start executing this if, it, if I am saying that it will start executing that infinite loop, it will keep it in its call stack. So what does that mean? After five seconds, as soon as the timer gets over, it will be pushed into the callback queue. Now let's see Let it get pushed. Now timeout function is getting pushed, but see it will forever remain in the callback queue and will never get pushed to the call stack. So guys, the call stack always should be, you should not write any code such that a call stack never becomes empty. If you write such codes, the things like on click, on press, on change, no event driven things are going to get executed because all those event driven things is going to be pushed in the callback queue as soon as you trigger the event and event loop keeps on checking the call stack and nothing will be get pushed to the call stack if it's not empty. So this is the way JavaScript achieves this asynchronicity. But wait, how is it single threaded? So guys, if you see there is a single stack, okay? And each thread, as I said, has a dedicated stack to it. So there is just a single execution stack. And if you see, if JavaScript would really be a multi-threaded language, this kind of thing would never happen. If a thread get stuck in an infinite loop it doesn't mean that other threads would never get a chance just try executing two for loops each loop dedicated to two threads in java and see there will be a random context switch from one thread to another thread so if javascript would actually be a multi-threaded language the context switch would have happened and this kind of stuck thing would never happen this timeout function would get executed at some point of time so guys this is how javascript achieves its asynchronicity being a single threaded 
single threaded language okay so we can't spawn any thread by ourselves but we can achieve asynchronicity by using various web apis so let me tell you one thing how is this ever getting managed how is this single threaded so let me give you one let me tell you one more thing that javascript runtime is single threaded but remember browsers are never multi threaded because see those execution of timers is what it is it is something that is happening parallelly to the execution uh, so parallelly as the call stack is getting executed right so your browsers are actually multi threaded not your javascript runtime so this is the way javascript works under the hood thank you guys please comment below that what would be the next under hood session that you would like to know uh, till then good night guys happy hacking bye